Hey you guys, welcome to my channel. Thank you for coming. In this video, you guys are gonna get to hear my response to the claims that Katie made last year when she said that I used super chat money that was given to me to pay my car note, bankruptcy, truck note, whatever you wanna call it. She insinuated that I defrauded my followers. In this video, you guys are gonna see proof that that is not true at all. So how did I use Super Chat money to pay my truck payment, the bankruptcy, if the payment was already made and processed by November 26? That's four days before the Super Chat stream even happened. That is one piece of evidence that debunks the entire claim that Katie made. But I'm still gonna show you guys proof of everything else to show that pretty much everything that Katie said in this stream was not true at all. Okay, so as you guys see in this picture, it is a screenshot of the Super Chat Drive. That was actually held on November 30th. I have a red arrow pointing to it so you guys can see the date. And on the right in the screenshot, it shows a picture of my payment, which was made and processed by November 26, 2019. It shows that I actually made the payment on the 24th and it was completely processed and the effective date is November 26, meaning it was paid before the Super Chat Drive. I just wanted to like jump on Instagram too and thank you guys because it's been a really crazy couple months. Um, a lot of accusations have been made against me regarding um, somebody's channel going down because of me. And I've found some new information that I think will explain why um, this fundraiser was, re was started because there was uh, some court documents I found that showed that some people involved in this were behind on some serious, serious debt. They had some serious debt they were behind on. And um, if they weren't current on that debt, they were going to lose their vehicle. Okay, so considering that our vehicles were and still are a part of a Chapter 13 bankruptcy case, the creditors cannot just come and repossess them. They have to have approval by the bankruptcy court system. And right at the end of November, after not making payments on the vehicle for months, they suddenly make a payment, like a really big payment, over $1,000 on this vehicle. And it was on December 5th that the uh, company that owns the debt and the car said they want to repossess it because they were so far behind. So um, I have court documents that show that on December 5th, the car company put in a request to repossess the vehicle and then a response by them that states that they made a humongous payment uh, in the end of November and they are asking that the, the vehicle not be re repossessed because they were able to make a payment at the end of November. Now you figure out what happened in the end of November. Just do your little deductive reasoning. I'm not saying that that's what was happening, but it definitely looks like there could be some circumstantial evidence pointing to the fact that maybe the people that held the fundraiser were behind on debt and realizing that they could pin something on me had this fundraiser and said it was about the kids, but it was really about a truck that was about to be repossessed. And if they didn't make the payment, they were gonna lose it. Now, the funny thing is, is that all of this is public record, all of it. Um, it's in US court. In fact, I purchased all the records uh, in U.S. courts. So, yep. So they they had a payment of sixteen twenty on a car. And so I'm guessing that the reason now again all the doctor reasoning that this email is suddenly um, not going to show up and they're not gonna discuss or address this fundraiser 
or even discuss that they rip people off is because the money's gone. The money was used to pay the truck payment that they were behind on that they hadn't paid according to the creditor since October. So they were like three payments behind. And now this company is requesting that they take possession of this vehicle on January 6th. A court date was scheduled for January 6th to repossess the vehicle. And the payment per month is over what? It's over a thousand dollars. How much was raised in that fundraiser? Over a thousand dollars. Is it a coincidence? Is it a coincidence? Now, I've also been told that a similar fundraiser was done in this fall related to a football jersey drive that somebody told me um, apparently someone ran off and stole money for jerseys for the football team. But apparently, according to some of her former moderators, that may not have been the truth because her sons might not have been on the team or the football tribe, the Jersey stuff never happened. Well, the car payment over $1,000 has to do with the ongoing bankruptcy that's in court in the federal government, in bankruptcy court. Yeah. So now there could have been potentially two fundraisers that were, were done by this person under fraudulent pretenses to potentially... It is part of, this is public because it's in PACER because it's part of a bankruptcy filing. So if it's part of a bankruptcy filing, it is public because everything that's in a public bankruptcy case is public. And you can look it up on the PACER website, which is pacer.gov, and you can find all of the documents there. They are, you can, all you have to do is create an account. I have an account because I use it for my job. Writing articles and creating YouTube content does not require anyone to dig into someone's financials. I think the car payment was so high due to the Chapter 13 filing. And it was multiple late payments, not just one. So when somebody files for bankruptcy, then any debt that is outstanding is becomes public record. So I hope that makes sense. Nope, PACER is only for federal court cases. So it has nothing to do with international. So a a large payment was made in the end of November. We just paid our regular payment amount. It, that's what we pay every month. And because of that, they're now requesting that the car company not repos repossess the vehicle and they are promising that they will become current. There has been no statement about this. I just found this information. Yes, so you can go to pacer.gov and then you just have to create a username and password. 
And then when you go into the username and password, and again, I can't say that this is what the money was used for. This is just something that's happening, happening concurrently to this going on. And so sometimes if things are happening on one end and you need money for something, sometimes when people are desperate, they'll make choices to do certain things to get money. If I was so desperate for money, I could have asked my mom, my dad, my siblings, any of them for help. I wouldn't have to lie to my followers. Okay. And if the money was then used to pay off a car payment and say not for Christmas, um, and then it was done under the pretense that I took the channel down, that in and of itself becomes fraudulent. Or the it's a it's uh, done under the false pretense that you're giving. Uh, you're giving um, money to a family for Christmas when a car payment was made only days later. And I think the reason why they won't give out the email about the copyright or the community guideline strike is because the community guideline strike had nothing to do with me and it was actually a copyright strike and she knows that, and she also knows that the money is gone because they used it to maybe potentially pay off that car payment. So, yeah, so this is where we're at, you guys. I have all the documents, it's all public record. Okay, you guys, so I hope after watching that, you guys have seen the proof that shows that I did not take the money from the Super Chats to pay my car note or truck note or bankruptcy. Here's the deal with it, okay? Yes, we are in bankruptcy. We had to file after my husband was laid off work. He had a 10-year job in the oil field, and the oil field crashed. We were used to living a certain type of way because he made good money, and then we went to making nothing. So about a year after that, we did have to file bankruptcy. Now, once you file bankruptcy, you don't communicate with your creditors at all. Um, your bankruptcy attorney sets the payments, sets the amount of years that you're gonna go through it, and you no longer communicate with your creditors. Have there been times that we've had to contact our, our bankruptcy attorney and say, hey, this is going on. I don't know how we're gonna be able to make the payment this month and get a deferment. Yes, it's happened. We've had to do that. You are allowed deferments when you are in bankruptcy. Not a lot because you can only be in bankruptcy for so many months. So you're only allowed uh, a few. I'm not exactly sure how many. Um, so yeah, we've had to do that before. And I don't know if when Katie pulled my information on Pacer, if she was seeing the payments that we got permission to skip that were deferred. I don't know if she was seeing that or what she was seeing. But what I can tell you is that we never got a letter saying that our car was gonna be repossessed. We never got a letter saying that we had to go to court for our repossession, never, never happened. And I'm gonna assume that if that was the case that our attorney would have notified us of that. So in the bankruptcy suit, it was my car, my husband's truck, um, a few doctor bills, and then the attorney fees, right? So my car note was not $1,000. It was not leased. It wasn't, there was people in the comments saying, oh my God, that's stupid. Who would have a car note $1,000? Not me, I wouldn't. And that's not what it was. It was just our bankruptcy note. It was $1,600. It was $1,620. And then there was a $2 processing fee. So that's what it was. Um, and Katie's main issue, her main claim was that I took the money from that Super Chat drive and I paid my car note or my bankruptcy because it was about to be repossessed. So I think I've proved that that was not the case considering that I paid the payment for our bankruptcy, car, truck, whatever you wanna call it, days before the Super Chat drive was even held. So yeah, also the football situation. Um, my kids have played football 
for a couple of years now. Um, I, I think that was the second, no, I think maybe, yeah, I think that was the second year that they had played and the president of the league did spend a lot of the money and then when she got caught she went and took out one last withdrawal of like three hundred dollars and she took off she was mia for a long time she was just arrested back in i think it said september and i did post her arrest record and um i did kind of struggle with that because i didn't like it when my arrest record was posted online by katie but what i did was i um covered up her last name that way you guys can see in the text messages where I'm talking to a girl named Mandy and I'm saying like what happened with Crystal. You guys see that Crystal was arrested for theft over $5,000. It was like 9,000 I want to say and forgery because she had to forge uh, the second party signature to get checks off that football bank account cash. So I just done that to prove that yes, it happened. She was arrested. Here you go. Um, but just based off that, you guys still can't go find her and stalk her or anything like that. I wasn't trying to dox her. Um, so yeah, you guys, there it is. Uh, there's the proof that what Katie was saying was completely inaccurate. It was not true. And I don't know if she knew that the thing that she was saying was untrue. If she is as good of a researcher as she says to be, then she knew that it was untrue because the documents that she pulled would have showed her that I made the car payment and that it was processed by November 26th. She easily should have went straight over to Steve's channel to see the date of the Super Chat drive. And she would have seen that it was on November 30th. So her deductive reasoning would have told her, oh, well, Leslie, I already made the car payment. So obviously that's not what she used the money for. Uh, so maybe that did happen. And she just went ahead and said what she said. Or maybe she didn't go to Steve's channel to see when that stream happened. I don't know. But either way, it was a lot of assumptions, a lot of accusations, um, accusing me of committing crimes. And I think that's one of the reasons why she's in the position that she's in with Tati. I don't hate Katie. I don't wish bad for Katie. I know she has a family and I know this is their income. And I know if Katie gets kicked off YouTube, she is going to lose her income. So I think Katie needs to back away before that happens. And she needs to really do some self-reflection. Like if Katie watches this, I hope she sees it and then sees my proof and she realizes, oh wow, I sounded like a huge, excuse my French, I sounded like a huge jackass considering everything that I said was not true. And I hurt Leslie's reputation and her character because the people in my stream believed what I was saying. And that's just the truth of it. There was people in her chat that were subs of mine at that time, but they were believing what she said. Even though she didn't show any proof, they just believed it. They just took her word. So what Katie needs to understand is that people believe us. They think that we're doing the research to tell them the truth. So make sure you tell the truth. Also remember that the people that we talk about are humans. We don't want to ruin their reputation. We don't want to defame them. We just want to report on them and have fun with it. That's all you need to do. You can still have a successful channel without speaking so ugly about people. Also, I think Katie needs to stop expecting things from other people that she don't give people in return. Um, when Katie done a video about Creep Show, she said, Creepshow never called me and got my side. All these people are doing videos about the lawsuit, and they're not asking my side. Katie's never asked my side, and Katie did not ask Tati her side when she was going over the Halo Beauty and Tati lawsuit. Katie took that lawsuit as soon as it came out, and she took the things that Clark Swanson said and stated them pretty much as facts. But then when Emily D. Baker took the Tati versus without a crystal ball lawsuit and just broke it down for us to say, this is what Tati's side is saying. This is what they're accusing Katie of. Katie said that Emily was stating it as fact, but she wasn't. She was just breaking it down for us and letting us know what Tati was saying. So, Katie, if you're watching, please don't expect things in return that you don't give others. 
that's all. I don't know. That's what I would have to say. Um, please do not go give anybody hate. That's not what I want. Don't go down vote or anything like that. Not on my behalf. I just want you guys to realize that there was a lot of things done to me last year that ruined my character or my, my reputation. Even when I uploaded the last video, there were some comments, people calling me a liar. And that is what it is. I'm still trying to rebuild from what was lost back then. Also keep in mind, last year was a very rough time for my family. Very rough time for my family and Katie did not care. She didn't care one bit. And I hope Katie realizes now that, now that she's going through what she's going through, that when somebody is going through a tough time, kicking them when they're down just makes it worse. And that's definitely not what I wanna to do to her. I just want to show Katie what the issue is and it's things like what was done in this video that is gonna cause Katie to lose her channel. So you guys leave me your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. How do you guys think I done with showing you guys the proof of what Katie was saying and that it was inaccurate? Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. I'll try to make sure I go through the comment section on the last video. There was a lot of comments left and I'm still trying to get through them. But if you do have a question, my email is also in the description box below. So you can shoot me an email and I'll try to get back to you. Make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Goodbye, everyone.